Six tips on how to put in and tweak sound effects in your Camtasia videos. Let's have some fun! Hey, it's Gord here. Nice to see you again. If it's your first time here and you want to make great videos, learn more about video marketing, and become a ninja at video editing, then make sure you hit the subscribe button because that's what this channel is all about and you don't want to miss a thing. Let's dive in! Sound effects add such a cool touch to videos, especially where you're using motion graphics that need sound to bring them to life. This kind of micro-content video is becoming increasingly popular on platforms like Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and more. As you can see, there is animated text and motion graphics in this nice and short 9 second message. It has a great feel to it because of the layered sound effects. My goal was to find sounds that would make you feel like you're in the vacation experience. I added the sound effects as layers, one on top of the other. At first, I didn't know how many sounds I wanted to put together, but by experimenting, it all came together. In the end, I had four effects. Ocean breeze, kids playing, water splashing, and a bouncing ball. In order to use the various sound effects, you need to import them into your video editor. In this case, the editor is Camtasia, and you need to use the import media feature to bring the clips into the media bin, or you can drag and drop them in from the file explorer. From the media bin, you then need to add the sound effect clip to the timeline either by dragging it onto the timeline or using the right mouse button option, Add to Timeline at Playhead. As we go through the examples, you may see me turning a track on and off by clicking the eye icon near the track name. I do this so that I can isolate how individual sound effects of a given track sound and how the layering of the sound effects sound together as I build out the solution. Whether you're adding one sound effect or many to create a layered effect, consider the following audio editing tips. Tip number one. Each sound effect will be of a different length and need to be positioned on the timeline in a spot that syncs with the video clip. For example, the bouncing ball sound needs to exactly execute at the time of the bounce. Some sound effects will need to be shortened to fit, and in doing so, you will need to determine the part of the clip you desire to use. In this example, both the ocean breeze and the kids playing clips are well over a minute, but I reduced their use to just 9 seconds each. The bouncing ball clip was 4 seconds long and had 4 bounce sounds, but I only wanted 2 bounce sounds, and so I shortened it to just 1 second. Tip number 3. Adjust the volume of the individual clips so that the end result of the layered sound achieves the experience you're after. So in this example, if the water splash sound was too loud, you might not be able to hear the ocean breeze. To adjust the volume, move the cursor to mouse over the green line to show you the double-headed arrow, and then click and drag to adjust the volume. With the change, you will also see the waveform change as well. Fine-tuning the volume at the beginning and end of a sound effect clip can be achieved by using the fade-in and fade-out audio effects, in addition to the volume adjustment noted above. To apply the fade-in or fade-out audio effects, just drag the effect onto the audio clip that you wish to change and then adjust the length and volume of the fade with the audio point that appeared. For example, in the water splash effects, I used fade-in and fade-out to ease in and out the sounds of the water splashing to soften the effect. Another way to tune the audio within a clip is through the use of audio points. Simply double click anywhere on the volume line to add an audio point. Then you can click and drag the point to adjust the volume. For example, with the bouncing ball sound, rather than shorten the clip, I could also have added an audio point or two to adjust the volume down in a pattern to my liking.
But wait, there's more. You could also use the playhead green and red handles to make a selection of the clip for editing, see the blue highlighted area, and then drag the volume line up or down to adjust the level. This audio editing technique instantly adds four audio points onto the line and makes it super easy to raise or lower the volume for the clip selected area. In my example, I could easily have created a silent floor for the bounces of the ball that I wanted to cut out. This would be an alternate solution to just shortening the clip length. If you've made a mess, you can easily delete a given audio point and remove all the audio points through the right mouse button options that you access while on top of a single point. Tip number four. Some sound effects may be too short and you will want to repeat them in the cycle. This can easily be done by copying and pasting the sound effect again. The water splash sound effect was too short, just four seconds, and so I duplicated it to get almost eight seconds in total. As you can see, applying sound effects is a creative endeavor and involves you tuning the elements in your editing to get the result you desire. Here is another simple example where I used three sound effects to work with a six second clip of video. The sounds make the content fun. It starts with the musical strings tiptoe effect followed by an egg cracking sound and then a cartoon escape sound effect. In this next example, another micro content style piece, I bring together sound effects with more motion graphic animations. This seven second clip shows you how the metaphor of using gas is like burning money and it goes pretty fast. I searched for sound effect clips relating to money sounds and fire burning. Tip number five. When layering clips, strategically start some clips after or before others, and even have some sound elements run a little longer than others for dramatic impact. In this example, I start the sound with just the wind and money counting, and then I introduce the fire burning sound. It's very subtle. However, I also stop repeating the fire burning and money noises a little early so that the effect of the wind sound lingers to the end of the clip. I even leave the wind howling sound on longer, be sure that when you play with the volume levels of the effects, that they don't get a clipping level or too loud, that they overpower narration or other music that may be in the background. Wow, there's no question that putting this all together is an editing art form where the beauty is in the ear of the beholder. Tip number six, don't overdo it. It's so easy to get excited to add in all kinds of sound effects to your video because of how fun they can be to play with in the editing process. Please be sure that what you add in, whether it's for a piece of micro content or just an isolated sound effect, that it does not distract your audience from hearing your message clearly. Hey, next I want to show you some great sites to find your sound effects. But before I go there, if you want to discover how to make great videos from home, if you want to learn about dialing in your video shooting setup, if you want to learn about video cameras, audio and lighting, then make sure you grab my free Better Videos From Home guide by clicking on the YouTube card displayed above. Okay, so where do I go to find sound effects on the web? I use audioblocks.com as my primary resource for sound effects. I love how you can search by category and quickly test effect after effect. I also found a solution for everything I've ever needed, at least so far. You pay an annual membership fee that lets you do unlimited downloads of royalty-free music, sound effects, and loops. Royalty free here means that you can use them commercially without having to pay additional fees. FindSounds.com is a web search engine site focused on sounds. It's like a Google for sounds. It has a large database, but you ultimately go to other sites to get the sounds. Be sure that you adhere to any licensing rules as each site may have its own set of rules. Freesound.org is a collaborative database of Creative Commons licensed sounds. Here you can browse, download, and share sounds as well. AudioJungle.net is another source. It is also a pay site where you pay per track, and it has a vast array of sound effects and lots of categories to search. DigitalJuice.com has a one-time, lifetime pay plan for access to their library. The entire library is 100% royalty-free as well, which means, again, no additional fees to use the content in your creative projects. Please note that no matter where you get your sound effects from, be sure to understand any licensing and copyright rules that may be applicable regardless of your intended use, be it for personal or commercial purposes. Wow, those sound effects sure bring content to life. Thank you so much for watching. I love creating these videos on Camtasia and how to make better videos. 
If you want to learn all the secret tips and you want to discover how to make great videos fast, make sure to click the icon below and subscribe, and you won't miss a thing. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.